Most modern engines aren't failing because of bad maintenance. They're failing because of the oil advice everyone blindly follows. And that should worry you. Because if your engine fails early, nobody takes responsibility. Not the manufacturer. Not the dealership. Not the shop that told you, you're doing everything right. Let me say this clearly. Modern engines are not failing because drivers suddenly stopped caring about their cars. They're failing because the rules changed and almost nobody updated the advice. Engine design moved forward. Oil strategy didn't. The way engines are built today is fundamentally different from how engines were built even 20 years ago. Materials changed. Clearances shrank. Control systems became hydraulic and oil dependent. But the oil advice most drivers follow, it stayed stuck in the past. And the results are everywhere. Roller camshafts failing. Hydraulic lifters collapsing. Bearings wiping out far earlier than they should. Engines that were engineered to last a quarter million miles are struggling to reach 100,000. And here's the uncomfortable truth most people don't want to hear. Modern engines almost never die suddenly. They're worn down slowly, silently, long before anyone realizes what's happening. By the time you hear a tick, a knock, or see a warning light, the damage has already been building for years. And in most cases, the cause isn't bad driving. It isn't bad luck. And it usually isn't the oil brand you chose. It's something far more basic. Oil contamination. To understand why this matters so much, you first need to understand what oil actually does inside a modern engine. Because oil today is doing far more work than most people realize. Section 1. Oil is no longer just a lubricant. Most drivers still think engine oil has one job. Lubrication. That thinking comes from older engine designs, where oil's primary role was simply to reduce friction between moving parts. That thinking is outdated. In modern engines, oil performs multiple critical functions at the same time, and failure in any one of those functions can shorten engine life dramatically. Oil still lubricates moving parts, but it also removes heat from highly loaded surfaces that coolant never touches. It cleans by carrying combustion byproducts, soot, metal particles, and debris to the oil filter. It protects internal components from rust and corrosion during cold starts and short trips. And just as importantly, it helps seal clearances between moving parts. But there's one job that matters more today than ever before. Modern oil acts as hydraulic fluid. And this is where the rules truly changed. Modern engines are packed with oil-powered hydraulic systems, variable valve timing, cam phasers, hydraulic lifters, cylinder deactivation systems, turbocharger, oil control circuits. These are not passive components. They actively rely on oil pressure, oil flow, and oil cleanliness to operate correctly. If oil pressure is unstable, these systems misbehave. If oil is dirty, these systems wear internally. If oil viscosity drops due to dilution, these systems fail. Every one of them depends on oil moving through extremely tight internal passages. They do not tolerate contamination. They operate through clearances that are incredibly small. In many cases, those clearances are smaller than 20 microns. To put that into perspective, a human hair is roughly 70 microns thick. So we're talking about oil flowing through passages far smaller than anything the human eye can see. When oil is clean, these systems work flawlessly and silently. When oil is contaminated, damage begins almost immediately. That's where the problem starts. Section 2. Why cleanliness matters more than power. In industrial and aerospace applications, cleanliness is not optional. It's mandatory. In aircraft hydraulics, turbines, and power generation equipment, contamination control is treated as a life-or-death issue. There's no guessing. There's no close enough. There's no, it'll probably be fine. And the data from those industries is extremely consistent. Across decades of studies, one conclusion keeps repeating. The majority of mechanical wear is caused by contamination. Not horsepower. Not RPM. Not oil brand. 
contamination. Multiple studies show that over 80% of mechanical wear is directly linked to particulate contamination. And here's the part most people miss. The smallest particles cause the most damage. They're invisible to the naked eye. You can't feel them. You can't hear them. And many are small enough to pass straight through standard oil filters. Once they enter circulation, they don't just pass through the engine once. They circulate thousands of times. Every pass creates micro damage, abrasion, erosion, material fatigue. And this damage starts below the surface, long before anything breaks or makes noise. By the time a component finally fails, the real damage has already been done. Section 3. Why engine failures seem sudden. When an engine finally fails, people almost always say the same thing. It just happened out of nowhere. But in reality, it almost never does. The failure process is slow, quiet, and completely predictable. Here's what actually happens. A hard microscopic particle becomes trapped between two moving surfaces. Instead of load being spread evenly, that load concentrates into a tiny contact point. Material strength is exceeded. A subsurface crack forms. That crack grows with every heat cycle, with every acceleration, with every cold start. Eventually, the surface can no longer support the stress. And suddenly, a cam lobe wipes. A lifter collapses. A bearing spins. To the driver, it feels instant. To the engine, it's the final step of a long, slow process. Same physics that create potholes in winter roads. Different machine. Same failure mechanism. Section 4. OEM oil intervals and the reality of wear. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Factory oil change intervals. 10,000 miles. 15,000 miles. Lifetime fluids. Those intervals were not designed to maximize engine longevity. They were designed to reduce advertised ownership costs. Short maintenance schedules look expensive on paper. Long maintenance schedules look attractive in marketing brochures. But engines don't care about marketing. And nowhere is this more damaging than during engine break-in. Break-in is the highest wear period. The highest wear an engine will ever experience does not happen at high mileage. It happens early. During break-in, several things happen simultaneously. Surface roughness is at its highest. Machining debris is still present. Clearances are stabilizing. Material transfer is occurring. Oil analysis data makes this crystal clear. During early break-in, silicon contamination spikes. Metal particles increase dramatically. Wear rates are often three times higher than after break-in. And here's the key problem. Not all of that debris is captured by the oil filter. It circulates through hydraulic lifters, cam phasers, bearings, oil control solenoids, again and again. Waiting 5, 10, or 15,000 miles for the first oil change allows that debris to continue circulating. That damage is permanent. No oil upgrade later can undo it. Section 5. What racing environments taught us. In racing and performance environments, this became obvious very quickly. Engines that received multiple early oil changes showed dramatically longer camshaft and lifter life. Same parts. Same suppliers. Same loads. The only difference? Contamination control. Clean oil early prevented damage that would have shown up much later. This isn't magic. It's mechanical reality. Section 6. Why oil brand matters less than you think. Here's another uncomfortable truth. Oil cleanliness often matters more than oil brand. Fresh oil straight out of the bottle is not perfectly clean. Oil that has circulated briefly through a high-efficiency filter can actually be cleaner. Filters also behave in ways most people don't understand. As a filter loads, its efficiency often improves. Constantly resetting filters can temporarily reduce filtration performance. That's why oil change strategy matters more than oil loyalty. Section 7. Oil change intervals should follow engine life. One oil change interval does not fit every stage of an engine's life. Early engine life, shorter intervals to remove break-in debris. 
midlife engines, longer intervals once surfaces stabilize, late engine life, shorter intervals again as wear becomes less predictable. Anyone pushing one universal interval is selling simplicity, not durability. Section 8. Viscosity and Contamination Low viscosity oils work very well when contamination levels are low. That's why they perform fine in clean, well-controlled gasoline engines. But introduce fuel dilution, soot, dirty injectors, extended drain intervals, and wear accelerates rapidly. In higher contamination environments, thicker oils often show lower wear because they maintain protective film strength under load. That's not opinion. That's data. Section 9. Why additives often make things worse? Solid additives, nanoparticles, and friction reducer gimmicks all have one thing in common. They increase particle count. They do not help hydraulic systems. They compromise them. More particles mean more abrasion. Modern engines don't need shortcuts. They need clean oil. Section 10. What actually protects your engine? If long engine life matters to you, focus on fundamentals. Change oil early during break-in. Use high-efficiency oil and air filters. Avoid particulate additives. Use high-quality fuel to reduce dilution. Adjust oil change intervals as the engine ages. No magic products. No brand worship. Just sound mechanical practice. Modern engines are not weak. They are intolerant of contamination. The failures we see today are not mysterious. They are predictable outcomes of dirty oil, long intervals, and marketing-driven advice. Remember this, the dirtier the oil, the shorter the engine life. Ignore that principle, and eventually, the engine will collect the bill.